And the worst thing in life is not to be broke. The worst thing in life is to taste some success and then you gotta go back to being a nobody. That's hard. I'm gonna say it again because I wanna make sure you catch it. It's one thing to be broke, but you do it. First pick with the second pick in the 2012 NBA draft. Select Anthony Davis. The Charlotte Bobcats select Michael Kidd Gilchrist. It is the first time ever that the top two picks in the NBA draft have come from the same school. Bradley Beal celebrates his 19th birthday. An emotional moment for Dion Waiters. I ain't stopping for nobody. I got work to do and I'm gonna do it. I'm not the best. I'm not the brightest. It took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. And I'm running circles around the dude who graduated from Michigan State. That's summa cum laude. <laughs> the smartest, but you will not outwork me. I wake up every morning at 3 o'clock. We got home from the University of Cincinnati at 2.45. I still didn't go to bed. At 3 o'clock, I went on my walk, my hour and a half walk with God, came back in, did some work. Are you hearing me? You might be smarter. Your family might come from privilege. Your daddy might own a company, but you will not outwork me. You will not have more drive than I have, more passion than I have. And I'll beat you every single day because I got passion. You will not wake up in the morning because you spoiled. You will not get up before eight. You will not get up before six. I will out rep you. you push up every day I'm going. I'm doing more and more each day. I'm trying to do them until I can't do them no more. I'm doing sit-ups every day. I will outwork you. And I'm telling you, you go out there and like Cal, you show up. They can't outwork you. If you win 7-0, they can't outwork you. But you, know, you know, it's a whole lot of NBA players, but you ever notice when you watch the game, there's just some guys, they just on a whole different type of level, right? And when I study, if I'm at, so I'm going to give you three things, I'm letting you go. I'm going to give you three things that's within these people that make them do what they do. And one of the things, if you've ever watched Michael Jordan, if you've ever watched Kobe, and I'm not a fan of either of the two, but I love great. And there's some kid who didn't get to come here, and he's pissed that he didn't get to come here. He thought he should be here too, and guess what he's doing? Why you in here listening to me? <laughs> Why you getting your shoes? Why you getting your white joy gear? Why you feel like, yep, I made it. I'm one of the top 20, baby. There's some kid who didn't get to make it. And right now, he's trying to take your spot. Right now, he said, yep, he beat me to the classic, but I beat him in the NCAA. I get him next year. If I don't get him in, I get him after that. And I see him in the pros, and I get him in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you got an opportunity, but you got to separate yourself. And so I'm telling you that this listen to me very closely. The one that the, my sweetest commercial that MJ did. You know the commercial where you know Mike is just talking about how he made the game, but he apologized for making it look so easy. 
I'm from Detroit. I can't stand Michael Jordan. We probably would have won about four championships had it not been. You know what I'm saying? Isaiah Thomas, Michael Wade, Vinny Michael Wade. We had the spider. We had it going on. Rick Mahorn. I mean, we was murdering them. Michael Jordan came in and was like, nope. I'm telling you, don't get, 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 get from the sea thing. I dare you, I dare you for one time in your career, I dare you to exhaust yourself. I dare you to, I dare you to leave every single thing on the field one season. Everything walk off exhausted. Like Mike when he got 45 with the flu. He had the flu. Like for real, let's be honest. One of your players got the flu and they tell you I got the flu, I can't play. You're like, cool, I understand. We'll catch you next game. Mike was like, I got this, don't worry about it. But Mike, you got the flu. I, my flu is still better than your normal game, all right? Whatever your little game is, my flu gonna outdo your game. So I'm gonna play, play. The thing that I love most about Michael Jordan was the last time he lost to the Pistons, he cried. He walked off the court with the tears in his eyes. You know that one when you lose and you ain't got no sportsmanship? You know that one? Normally, you know, you lose, you just man up. You, you don't want to shake their hand, but you do it anyway, because that's a part of the game. But when you get so, when you get so tired of losing, when you get pissed, when you can't take losing no more, you lose the whole little shake in the hand, and you just walk off, and Mike walked off with a tear in his eye. And let me tell you something, he walked off and said to himself, this will be the last time the Pistons ever beat me again. I dare you. I dare you to show up. Listen to me, I dare you to... To, to just say, you know what? I'm not going to save nothing this year. I ain't going to save nothing this year. I'm everything I got. Coach getting everything. All oh, everything. Whatever they ask me to do, I'm doing that beyond. I'm leaving. I'm, when I leave this year, I ain't going to have nothing left. And why do I say that? I, I'm, I'm a runner. I, I, I run long distance. Some days when I run, I go six, seven. But when I finish, I'm not breathing hard. Raise your hand if you know what I'm talking about. I just finished doing six miles, but I'm not breathing hard. Raise your hand. You know exactly what I'm talking about. No, raise your hand if you've ever experienced it. You've done what you're supposed to do, but at the end of the day, you're not really breathing real hard. Raise your hand. Mm -hmm. You did. You put the workout in. You did exactly what you're supposed to do. You did your exercise. You did your reps. But you still. <laughs> you good. <laughs> Tell me if you know a time when you ran so hard, you worked so hard, that you felt your chest after you finished, you felt your heart beat. Right? You ever worked so hard, you felt that blood, like you could taste blood, you worked so hard. Right, you sweating, and you knew when you finished, you had to sit down and get you something to drink because you knew you didn't have no more to get. Raise your hand if you had that experience. It's all about desire. You just got to come out here and do what you got to do. We wanted it real bad, you know, and, and me as a leader, I had to come out and do my best. Somehow I found the energy. I just stayed strong. I wanted it really bad. Are you hearing me? There's greatness in you. And you mean to tell me you're never going to reach your full potential? You mean to tell me you're never going to be what you've been called to be? That you're not going to do what you've been called to do because you are afraid? Listen to me. The boogeyman ain't real. That's why I need you to, I need you to understand that you can have it. For real, you can have it. But it's, it's going it's to be a fight. And if you're willing to put up the fight, I'm telling you at the end of the fight, it's going to come victory.